Backup is something we tell ourselves that we will always do later on, but we never get to do it. This right here is Backup Sheep, which can back up your website, files, images, and so much more. Let's check it out. So this is the Backup Sheep platform. To itself, it doesn't have a lot to it. It is definitely integrations we need to work at. Because up here we have our home, we have the nodes that we're using, and you can see it is just the statistics here which are changing. Then we have the live chat, which is the support. We have the documentation and the change log. So let's dive into integrations here. Under integrations, we have cloud providers, where you can see we have AWS, DigitalOcean, and some other ones. Then we have databases, where you can see we have MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB. Furthermore, then we have web servers, which is just SFTP slash FTP sign-in. You can also use SSH. And then we have storage platforms. Under storage platforms, we have something like DigitalOcean again, Dropbox, Filebase, Google Drive, and so on. So you can also use this to back up your private files. It is not only the website, etc. So you can also use this for your private files. It is not only databases and websites. But let's dive in and try and set up a MySQL backup right here as a database. When we set up a new integration, we need to give it a name. We need to set the endpoint. And this is where it should basically pull the data from. And you can see that we get an IP here. So what can happen sometimes is that your server thinks that this is some suspicious activity on the server and therefore they want to ban this IP. But if you whitelist it, you will never have this happening. So let's just call this integration YouTube video just for the sake of this review. We have the database name, database type and the rest of the information down here. So I'm choosing MySQL. So let me just fill out the rest of the information. So I have now added the integration here. And what I can then do is I can create a database node. Because for this node, it needs to be combined with the integration in order for the node to actually work and run these backups. So here you can see that we have all the different tables. I'll just back up all of the tables. I'll just call this one a name and I'll add some nodes here and then we'll create the actual node. So now you can see that we have a backup of this MySQL database. We can set up some notifications which will be sent per email. Over here, we can create backups. We can add a schedule. Of course, we can modify the settings, but I will start by creating a new schedule. Let's just call this one backup. And here we need to say that it needs to take a backup every single day. And the amount of backups, let's say that we need to always keep 10 backups. And the time zone I will set to Europe. So what I really like here is that you can set multiple locations this makes it even more secure for you because then if something happens physically to the place where the server is holding your backup, then at least there is another place where the backup is available. So let's create this schedule here. So it will now automatically make a backup every single day in those places that we just set. We can also manually just create a backup right now. Let's set it to just Europe for this one and then create backup. So now it has started the backup and it will finish in a few seconds. And when it then finishes, whether it fails or succeeds, then we will get an email with a notification that tells us how it went. That is the MySQL setup. Let's try and go back to integrations and set up a very simple Dropbox integration. So scrolling down here, we have the storage platforms and right here we have Dropbox. So Dropbox is a lot simpler to set up because if I click on Dropbox here, I am sent to Dropbox to simply just sign in. So now it is connected successfully. So let's try and go down and click on Dropbox again. So you can see here it has connected my account and I can then modify it, pause it and delete it. So here, if I say modify integration, it will basically just save the name and the node. I can't really work with it. I can't say that it needs to take this often a backup. When should it take a backup? Where should it save it? Just as we saw with the MySQL. So this one is simple to set up, but the settings afterward are very, very simplified. I will just delete it again as a storage. So now let's go back to integrations. And the last one I want to show you is a very simple FTP web server setup. 
So when I click here, then we see a window very much like the one we saw before. And we need to fill out some information about where should it basically pull the data from, the name, the host name, and so on. So let me just fill this out. So now I have added an integration for my own website with an SFTP sign-in. I will then again create the website node here. And then on the left side, we can then see all of the folders that we have on my website. At the moment, the website is laying within public, so I will just only include the public folder. And up here again, let's just call it very simple backup. You can also exclude here. You can say backup everything except for these specific paths, but I will keep this as is and then I'll create the node. Again, we see the same view we saw with the MySQL where I can create a simple backup. I can add a schedule to tell it to take a backup every single day. And again, I can set the number of backups, the time zone, and where it should save these backups. Again, again, I can actually save it on Dropbox as well, which takes me back to the integrations, because this is basically just a way where you can store your own platforms. So you can't really take a backup off your Dropbox. You can just use Dropbox to store your files, which really limits this. I would really like to be able to back up my Dropbox or my Google Drive into this platform. But another thing is that more and more platforms, especially website platforms, they have backup built in to the system. So whether you're using a WordPress managed server hosting, then they often have backup built in. It is mainly for if you have some custom FTP setup or a very limited domain provider or hosting, then this could be interesting for you. Of course, if you have something specific like your own build system, then again, this would also be interesting for you. But as a private person, I would like to be able to basically back up my Dropbox, my Google Drive and so on. So I have another place to back up my documents, my files, my pictures even. But at this moment, it is not possible. It is only possible to basically back up your cloud providers, your databases and web servers. And then you can choose whether you want to back it up on Backup Sheep or you want to use one of your other cloud providers as we saw down here, which is basically your storage platforms. Now the pricing of Backup Sheep is very simple. You have a free plan and a paid plan. And the free plan you get 25 gigabytes of storage and three nodes. That is a lot of storage and that basically means that you can set up three integrations where they cannot together surpass 25 gigabytes. The unlimited plan, you have unlimited nodes, so you can set up as many integrations as you want to, but you are still limited on two terabytes of storage. The alternative to backup sheep is Snapshooter. And these two compared to each other are very similar. They have more or less the same integrations. The pricing are very much alike, but I still feel that backup sheep are taking it a step further. I would, however, like if backup sheet could make it a little bit easier to make all of these integrations. I know with Dropbox and etc., it's really easy, but for instance, with the VPS, the FTP and so on, I feel it could be made easier, as I mentioned in the walkthrough. Now, the future of backup sheep seems quite interesting. First off, they're working on a restore function. So let's say that you finally want to restore a backup that you have made instead of what you have to do now, where you have to download it, manually upload it to wherever the backup needs to go. Then with a restore function, you can basically with one click restore this backup so it's live again. It will save you a ton of time. Furthermore, then they are adding more integrations to pCloud and Plesk, which is a lot like cPanel. And last but not least, then they are adding automatic cleaning. This means that you can say that every time there is a backup, there is older than 30 days, then you have to delete it. In this way, you will never surpass the amount of gigabytes that you have on your account, and you will have a clean interface of only the backups that you need to keep. Using Backup Sheep, I really like that they have a lot of integrations and even more coming soon. And then their automatic scheduled backup really makes it easy for me. But the fact that I have to manually download and upload to use the restoring function is a bit of a tedious process. And then it is not always easy to set up these different integrations. 
backup is super important and once you set it up it just runs automatically in the background you never have to think about it again until you need to restore a backup i want to give backup sheep four stars it's a great and solid backup platform but the restoring process really needs to be improved that's my review thank you so much for watching let's catch up on the next one